I'm Fletcher Roden, and this is Quotes and Quips. Today, words of wisdom from the Buddha. Quotes and Quips is brought to you by my website, FletcherRoden.com. That's where you'll find links to my Amazon.com author page, where you can buy my books in paperback or for Kindle or sometimes in audiobook format. There's also a link to my Spotify artist page, where you can download my music in its various subgenres. I've got new music for uh, 2024, so check that out. Now, you can download my music anywhere you like, all across the internet. But at my website, there's free music that you can get there exclusively. So, today on Quotes and Quips, the Buddha has this to say. The root of all sorrow is attachment. The root of all sorrow is attachment. Hmm. Well, okay. So, it's easy to see that the Buddha is, excuse me, making reference here to physical, worldly items, goods, mostly. Items of attachment. Uh, symbols of status and wealth, comfort, home automobile, any luxury, wealth, art, treasure, any physical thing of this world to which you are attached will be a cause of sorrow when you are taken away from it or when it is taken away from you. And what Buddha tells us, I believe, is that if you look at everything everything in your life you've ever been sorrowful about, it's always been because you lost something you loved. Or someone that you loved. So, it's not just items of attachment. People. We become attached to our parents, and we lose them. And that brings us sorrow. We're attached to our pets, to our friends, To our past, even. Even things which cannot be said to exist. Um, so we go from the realm of physical attachment and, and um, attachment of, of, of the material, such as to clothing or cars or houses or money or the things that money can buy us, very quickly to the, to the spiritual thing. Because we can be sorry to lose a loved one. Money can't buy us another one of those. Money can't buy you another father or mother. Another best friend. Not a real best friend. So, these are the things that bring us the greatest sorrow when we, when we lose them. Because we have the greatest attachment to them. I would venture to say, I was much more attached to my best friend than I ever was to a car that I no longer own. And I'd much rather have the friendship than the car, but you know, you lose these things because you become attached to them. So Buddha's right in this way. But to, to further the point, we become not only attached to other people, but also to things like our past, our memories, our ability to reason, our awareness of ourselves. What happens when we slip into senility? Well, that's when we become detached from the thing we know and love most, our, our brain, our mind. Now, even though you cannot measure a human mind, you cannot weigh it, you cannot dissect it, you cannot photograph it, surely it does exist. And senility, in senility or Alzheimer's, something like that, we see the sorrow which comes from losing that to which we were attached. So Buddha would say, well, there you go. I win again. Can't beat Buddha. Um, and he's good. You're good, you. Huh? You're good, you. But... 
At the same time, one cannot remain unattached to everything. Even a sigma, like me, a lone wolf personality type, roughly 1% of the population, e even we become attached to the notion of society, of family, of love, of community, of, of hope. It's not all salty bitterness, you know? And we certainly become attached to the places we live and the things we have that are that remind us of our childhood. Everybody has those trinkets, souvenirs. Now, you don't want to invest everything in your trinkets and souvenirs. That's not where true happiness is. That's what Buddha is saying, is the kind of happiness you get from your trinkets and souvenirs, and even from the roof over your head, is going to be transitory. It's going to be temporary. And when it ends, if you're relying on that, then you're going to be sorrowful. Now, if you want to go ahead and accept the risk of sorrow and the burden of sorrow, then remain attached to those things. But if you want true freedom from sorrow, then you must have freedom from attachment. But I believe that must mean not only to your house or your car or your money, but to your friends, to your loved ones, to your past, to your future. And they say, well, the past is only a dream and the future is only an illusion and the present is all we have and it's fleeting. It only lasts this long and now it's gone already. So can we live without attachment to anything? Our own, our own worldview, our own... Uh, Bertrand Russell said I, I wouldn't... I wouldn't die for my own views because I might be wrong. I'd never die for my own beliefs because I might be wrong. Well, what do we have of ourselves and our world? If you take away the material goods, and if you take away the people, and then if you take away the memories, or the hopes, or the dreams, well, then what is there? What's left? I don't know. But I'm not sure it's a world I want to live in. And I, I don't think it's a, a life I'd want to lead. So, Buddha, with all respect, I say, a little attachment. A little bit, you. Huh? A little bit of attachment, you. Huh? A little bit, you. That's what I say. But, you know, you can't beat Buddha. And I certainly wouldn't want to try. We'll see what I do next week on... Quotes and quips. I'm here every Monday at, no at noon, right here on this YouTube channel. Uh, in the meantime, you can go check me out at my website. Uh, you can go to my other show from last year, Tracking the Lone Wolf, which is on its own YouTube channel called Tracking the Lone Wolf. You can subscribe to that. Uh, go check out my books at Amazon, my music at Spotify, or wherever you like to download your favorite music. That's it. Tune in again to the show next time, and until then, bye Mary.